hope that you guys have been liking my content this far. If you guys are new here, my name is Storm. I am 20 years old. I am a mommy of soon to be two. I normally don't do sit and talk videos, but for this time I will be doing a sit and talk video. If you don't like sit and talk videos, definitely click away. I have a one-year-old daughter right now and I am expecting one next month. This is actually going to be the first video that I actually announce the gender for this baby as well. I think that this like gives it away so much. I've been holding off on doing blue nails for so long because we didn't want to really say it until the end, but we are having a boy. What I did for this video was a Q&A questions about me. I asked you guys some questions, or I had you guys ask me some questions, and some of the questions were so good. I was so happy that I did this because I didn't know how many of you guys actually wanted to know this stuff about me. It kind of made me feel a little special, so thank you guys so much. If you guys see me moving around a lot, two reasons. One, I'm on my birthing ball right now because I got a balance. I'm 34 weeks currently. Also, if you see me look off this way, it's because I have Esme. She's taking a nap and I have her on the monitor, but I also have the questions on my notes on the iPad. So that is why I am over here as well. Without further ado, let's get on to our first question. It was when did we find out about baby number two? We actually didn't find out until a month after we conceived. And I had a dream and for those of you that don't know, I had a dream with Esme as well. I had a dream that I saw a positive pregnancy test and then the next night, I waited until nighttime because I was so like weirded out by it. Took a pregnancy test with my friends, found out that I was pregnant. And then Josh was on the road this time around because he's a truck driver, as most of you know. Um, he was on the road coming back and it was four, no, six in the morning. I woke up and I had a dream that I saw a clear blue pregnancy test again. And I was just like, oh my God. And this was the end of June. I took my pregnancy test, the first one when it came back negative, beginning of June, I think, or like mid-June. And then we found out in July and I got my period still in June, which is also crazy. I always hear the stories that a lot of women get preg like or get their periods and then find out that they conceive. Yeah, I was actually pregnant in June and I didn't even know it because I got my period. It was my last cycle and yeah. The next question is, what do I record my YouTube videos on? I record it on my phone. I actually recorded my first ever YouTube video on my iPhone 11 Pro and now I record it on my iPhone 14 Pro. I also love how quick and efficient it is to just get the videos from my phone and be able to just airdrop them to my laptop. So iPhones for the win. Next question is also YouTube related. It asks what tripod stand do I use? To be fair, I only had one. I used it when I was in middle school. I've had this one and this is the one that you guys are currently on. It's the Ambico. It's spelled out A-M-B-I-C-O. I really have nothing to say bad about this tripod. It's lasted me so long and I've dropped it. It's been all over the place. I've moved with it. So yeah, I moved three times with it so far to college to Josh's house, to the apartment, all those times it's lasted and I just love it. It's so durable and I think that it does give like a flat, like nice sturdy stand. My next tripods that I do use sometimes, I don't really use these as often when I'm at the house, but I probably will start bringing them out now that I'm like recording more. These actually came from Josh and they're the Joby or Joby. It's this one. But these are the ones that like you can kind of like just like use when you know, you're like walking and walking about i guess i've used this one i love this one it's actually kind of like the same one like that i have i guess it's just the only thing is like the little bubbles sometimes that gets annoying that like it doesn't like really stand firm but it works when you need a good angle this one is so new to me i literally just whipped it out of storage so honestly i couldn't even tell you if i genuinely do like it or not one thing that's so funny is josh is more like tripod savvy like with the information on the tripods and stuff i just use them to record i'm more of like the actual person who does recording but mans knows his stuff about tripods and things like that that's why i leave him in charge of our shoulders and our car seats because i know if anyone's gonna know 
the nitty gritty, it's gonna be Josh. Next question is, how has Josh and I's relationship been since having a baby? And I love this question because I feel like a lot of times it can go like 50-50. Everyone talks about how much pressure is put on your relationship, how relationships get dry after having a baby. And I think for the most part, our relationship itself has been pretty good. I can't necessarily complain. I think the only thing that makes it hard when having a baby is making decisions um, on like big life things now. Like you don't just think about you two and how you both feel. Now you have to think about what also works for you two plus your child. Another thing is we don't necessarily agree on everything parenting wise. That's just something that's gonna happen. You're not gonna agree with your spouse on everything parenting wise. But as long as you guys understand each other, I feel like that's something that we had to kind of adapt to is like, we may not agree on something parenting wise, but we just have to kind of understand each other and our perspectives on why the other person doesn't like what you like or why the other person wants to do something that you don't want to do. Overall, I think our relationship has been good. Arguments and things like that is just like a regular argument for when we didn't have a baby. And honestly, Josh and I have been together. We've been on and off since middle school. So like, we just kind of know what works for each other and what does not work. And um, we've kind of been getting better at that. How was my labor process for Esme? I am planning on doing a whole video as for my birth with Esme. It's been a year now since I've had Esme and I definitely wanted to, for the longest time, do a sit and talk video of me explaining like birth and how I felt and how Esme's birth experience was and all that stuff, but I just, between trying to go back into having a full-time job and then us moving and all that stuff. Yeah, it was just too much. So I didn't really have enough time. A lot of the questions that were asked were things such as like birthing related. And I just wanna say, I will be answering all those questions in my explanation on how my birthing went. <laughs> how my birth went, how my labor went. I get how, you know what? You know what I'm saying. My birth with Esme, my experience was good, honestly. I can't complain. I am a 4'9 female. I am a 4'9 female. She was a decent sized baby. She was very long. But um, yeah, I can't complain for the most part. My doctors, my nurses, my ugh, everyone was just so freaking good. I loved everyone who was involved with my birthing experience. They made it so memorable. Next question is, how hard was it to lose your baby weight? And I think that they meant the baby weight that I got from pregnancy, but I hope that I'm answering this question correctly. Honestly, I had Esme and my little guy back to back. They are not that far apart. Esme is only 14 months and I give birth to little man next month. I did not really lose the baby weight. I, to give you a little breakdown, I used to be an extra small and I'm currently going into a medium right now because of how much bigger I feel like I've gotten with this pregnancy. Let me be so honest, even after I gave birth to Ez and I was like six months postpartum, all that good stuff, I still did not fit in my original clothes. Like, but yeah, I don't think that I personally have lost any baby weight. I think that like, I just kind of got wider. <laughs> me as a person, I don't take my body func like fluctuating so hard just because I try to be very easy on myself. The biggest thing is I feel like a lot of women don't appreciate like what your body's doing in that process. The best advice that I have received and what I always echo out is your body was your baby's sanction for nine months. So you have to think about that. Your body was like a baby's home. You carried a child, a human, for nine months. So yeah, your body's gonna expand. Your body's going to not look like what it was before. Next one is, did you know that you wanted to keep your baby? On this question, I think that they meant with Esme. I also hope that I'm answering this question right as well. Um, in regards for keeping the baby, not keeping the baby, me personally, I just always knew that I wanted to be a mom. Josh always wanted to be a dad. And we both knew kind of going into everything that we wanted to be parents. I just think the surprise was when we found out we were actually parents. But 
in my head, it was never a question on if I wanted to keep Ez or not. I always wanted to have a baby and I thought whatever, whenever, however, whatever, I knew that it was meant to be if it happened. So yeah, that's just my personal belief on myself. I don't think that there's any judgment if that does come in your head. I was so out of place with how I found out the time I found out. But like I said, I just knew that whatever happens in my life happens for a reason. At the time, I didn't know what I was having, but I knew that whatever it was, this baby was put into my life for a reason. Next question, what is something that's not spoken about during pregnancy? And I think they meant like as common, like what's not something, what's something that's not commonly spoken about during pregnancy? How your body reacts to each pregnancy is gonna be so different. With Esme, I was so sick throughout my whole pregnancy and then it got so much better towards the end of my pregnancy and then I loved it. With baby boy, I was so good sick wise, like I wasn't sick at all, but I'm super uncomfortable and the last 30 days are actually like really kicking my butt. I love this next question. It says, how did you get yourself through pregnancy mentally? and physically and they also kind of dashed it on birth as well but like i said i will talk about the birthing one no honestly i'm gonna talk about it now forget it pregnancy birth all that stuff is such a mental game okay this is me editing this video now just ignore how i look right now as well but i personally feel like boo back and editing this video i feel like i was like restricting myself on what i was saying or what i was trying to say best way to explain my personal experience on pregnancy i normally try to look at things on the brighter side and with my pregnancy i was looking at it more like i'm nurturing a human my body's carrying a human and you're only doing it for nine months so i was trying to really keepsake each moment um especially when i would you know get more stretch marks and my body would expand and my numbers would go up things like that i know that a lot of times it's so easy to just kind of look at it like oh my gosh like i'm gaining weight and this is and that and you look at it in such a negative way but in all seriousness your body is trying to carry a human so i think that that's kind of like why i was so appreciative of my pregnancy physically for pregnancy i feel like it was just really hard with staying hydrated things like that but i think that the only time where I was super uncomfortable was towards my last trimester and it's maybe like the last 30 days of pregnancy where you're like super bloated, super uncomfortable, you're wobbling around the place, you can't breathe, <laughs> baby's like in your chest. I feel like with labor, women focus on the physical like pain that you're going to be in, but in reality, it's more just like discomfort. I don't think I was ever in pain to the point where it was like torturing pain or anything like that. But at the same time, I think if you mentally put yourself at a good pace with your pregnancy and, and your labor process, you're going to get through your pregnancy, your labor in such a good way. I think that that's what helped me tremendously is just how I was looking at everything, especially in labor. What I was noticing is when I would freak out, it would actually make it a lot worse on me physically because I was mentally in my head. That's all that I wanted to say. I feel like it was so hard saying it on this recording but yeah next thing is how do i afford kids <laughs> i did find this this question really funny because for those of you that don't know i am 20 josh is 22 we are some young parents josh and i have always worked jobs we've always held jobs as soon as i found out i was pregnant I wanted to kind of put a pause on school and just start working because being at school was not going to be bringing me an income. And that's just the truth of it all. Like my strong suit was my personality and hospitality just is able to bring that out of me. And I get paid for my personality, I guess you can say. And then the second thing was Josh. Josh got his CDL. Um, Josh has always wanted to kind of get into truck driving and that was something that he really focused on when he found out that I was pregnant. He was like, okay, great, we're gonna, we're gonna figure this out. 
sure enough, he went to school, got a CDL, um, and I kind of have been meaning for him to do his own thing, and I know he's been meaning for him to do his own thing as to breaking it down, like what he's done to get his CDL, but yeah, he does have his CDL, he works for a good driving company, so that's mainly where our actual income comes in from, but definitely me working as well does help. Even with as we kind of went back into full-time jobs, I think I went back into work after seven months of having as just because I didn't want to miss out on a lot from as and luckily I didn't <clears throat> but yes what is my birth plan looking like for this upcoming pregnancy this is a question that I do want to answer and I do want to talk about it in this video because I feel like this is going to be such a good bomb drop on you guys as well and a good closing out question so here we go I planned a c-section to be scheduled from March 21st of 2024. I wanted to do a C-section because this is like the only thing that I will kind of talk about. Um, I had a shoulder dystocia with Ez, and for those of you that don't know what a shoulder dystocia is, it's pretty much where your baby shoulders get stuck on your pelvis. I think that that's what they classify it as because when everything happened, I didn't even know that I had what it was called. Like, I didn't know that anything. All I knew was that I had a shoulder dystocia. This was broken down to me after I gave birth, after Esme was already out. And I think that that's what delayed, like, her being out um, traumatic, like tremendously. Like, that's what kind of delayed my game. But at the same time, it's not to the point where I felt like, I don't know, I kind of go back and forth with this. It did definitely scare me because of the health for Ez. I was more scared, is that like my daughter okay? Is everything okay? Um, which I guess just happens when you give birth, I guess. That's like the number one thing is like, you just automatically, as soon as your baby's out, you just think like the worst <laughs> and you want to make sure everything's okay and that was the most part. I think I was just so scared to make sure that Ez was okay. And she was, everything was fine. And honestly, I tell myself all the time, if I had to do that 10 times all over again, I would. I would, in a heartbeat, I would. If I had to say a negative, that would have been the only negative, was just like the shoulder dystocia, which was nothing that I could prevent, nothing that my doctors could prevent, nothing that like really anybody could prevent. It just happens, like I said, I'm so tiny. So. Because of that happening, I did schedule a C-section. My doctor was pretty much on board with it just because of the shoulder dystocia that I had with Ez. If I can avoid it and kind of be a little bit more at peace with everyone's health, I definitely will. And that's why I just went the C-section route. That wraps up today's video. I hope you guys did like this video and I hope that it did answer a lot of your guys' questions. Let me know if you guys want me to do more videos like this. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys give it a big thumbs up. Want to follow along for our journey and my journey, make sure you guys subscribe. All right, bye.